All right, welcome to a video on graphing quadratic functions, and we're going to start with the basic y equals a times x squared. So we're only going to be graphing ones that look like that. So our quadratic graphs are going to look a little bit different than our linear graphs and our absolute value graphs. They're actually going to look more like our absolute value. It's going to look kind of like a U shape, where our absolute value looks like a V shape. This is going to look like a U shape. So our graphing rules, we've got to have the rules. So number one, make sure it says y equals. We want to say y equals. We need to identify our a, b, and c, find the vertex, and the x part of that. So x equals the opposite of b over 2a. And then we need to make the x, y chart with our vertex in the middle at the center. And we're going to pick two x's to the left and two x's to the right. And we'll talk about that. We fill out our chart using our substitution. Then we graph our points and draw our curve. So let's get into it. Y equals. It says Y equals. We did that. Next, we're going to identify our A, B, and C. So my A for this is 1. I don't have a B or C, so B equals 0. C equals 0. So now we're going to find the vertex. To find the vertex x point, we're do x equals the opposite of b over 2 times a. Well, that, the opposite of 0 is 0 over 2 times 1, and we know that 0 divided by anything is just 0. So we know at the center of our xy chart, we're going to have a 0. Now all we're going to do is fill out our xy chart for the x's. So I'm going to pick two numbers immediately smaller than my zero. So negative one, negative two. You don't have to do that, but I just like doing this, as you've seen, just because it kind of keeps everything close together. Then I'm going to pick two numbers immediately bigger, one and two. And also when I do this, you're going to see something interesting on our xy chart, just like we saw with our absolute value. So let's fill out our xy chart negative 2, so y equals, substitute in our negative 2 for x, negative 2 squared is positive 4, negative 1, y equals negative 1 squared, negative 1 squared is 1, use 0, and we get 0 squared, which is 0. Now we're going to do our 1, so y equals 1 squared, 1 squared is also 1, and then 2, y equals 2 squared, and 2 squared is 4. So you see our xy chart is going to look like 4, 1, 0, 1, 4. That's why I like that. So whenever you pick it 1 each smaller and then 1 each bigger on the x, number line, you should get something that looks like this, and it's kind of like a self-check you can do. So let's go ahead and graph these. So I have negative 2, 4, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. And then we're going to draw a curve. And please make sure that it looks like a curve. I don't want it to look like an absolute value with a V. I don't want a V. I want a nice curve at the bottom. So make sure you do that. Okay, our next example, we have y equals negative 2x squared. It does say y equals. So now we are going to identify my a, b, and c. So my a is negative 2, my b is 0, and our c is also 0. Now we're going to find the vertex the x value of it, so it's x equals the opposite of b divided by 2 times a. So we get the opposite of 0, which is just 0, for 2 times negative 2, and again, that's just 0. So 0 is going to be in the middle of my xy chart. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is we've been substituting in values, filling out these xy charts for a while now. So I'm just going to pause the video and fill all that out so this video doesn't have to be as long as it would be. So I encourage you to go ahead and pause the video with me, try to fill this out on your own, and then check your work with mine.
Okay, so I filled out the chart, so go ahead and check your results with mine. Or yours maybe look a di little different depending on the numbers you picked. But that zero, 00 needs to be the same for everybody. So as long as this is the same and then you filled out the math right there, you should be good. And then we look here at our graph. And there's a couple things I want you to notice about our graph. First thing I want you to notice is that it's a little bit skinnier than our original graph, the first one we did. So it is a little bit skinnier. And if you look here, the difference is our A is a, is an, is a number. It's an integer. It's not just one, other than one, sorry. So we can kind of conclude that if our, our A is bigger than one or smaller than one and it's a negative integer, your graph is going to be skinny. You'll also notice that our graph is pointing down. That also has to do with the fact that our A is a negative. So if your A is negative, your graph is going to be opening down. It's going to look like a frown, so to say. And if it, your A is positive, it's going to be opening up like a smile. So negative A, frown. Positive A, smile. Okay, now we have y equals 1 fourth x squared. So we're going to do something similar. We're going to find the vertex together, and then I'll pause the video, and you pause, and I'll fill everything out, and we'll check each other's work. Now, before we do that, I want us to make a note of this a. So our a is 1 fourth, our b is 0, and our c is 0. Now, we just saw that positive negative means either open opening up or opening down. So this 1 fourth is a positive. So when we graph this, our graph should be opening up. If it's not opening up, it means we made an error somewhere because this is positive. The other thing is that this is a fraction. So that means it's going to change our graph a little bit, just like that negative 2 or any other integer bigger than 1 or a negative number less than, you know, less than zero changed our graph. This one fourth is going to change our graph a little differently too. So let's find the vertex together. So our vertex x, x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So we have zero divided by two to the one fourth. And who cares about the fraction because zero divided by anything is zero. And I'm going to pick the negative one, negative two, one and two. So now I want you to go ahead and pause the video, fill out the chart, and I'm going to pause the video now to fill out the chart as well. Okay, so go ahead and check your work with mine with the math. And then the important thing is we look over here at the graph. So if you notice, this graph is a lot fatter, bigger, wider. So fractions, anything between 0 and 1, or 0 and negative 1 are going to make your parabola, your curve, look a lot wider. So if it's bigger than 1 or bigger or smaller than negative 1, it's going to make it skinnier. Your parabola is going to get skinnier. And then if it's between 0, 1, 0, negative 1, it's going to be wider. So that's it for this video.